Good day, brothers and sisters. This is Pastor Angelo Cantuba, and I am recording a very short uh, devotional for you today as you embark uh, your study for the scriptures. And I pray that as you listen to this message, you will be encouraged, you will be comforted with God's word as we endure this uh, very unusual time of our lives uh, regarding the COVID-19 scare and also the enhanced community lockdown. So I pray as you listen to this, you'll be, uh, this will find you uh, safe and sound and uh, healthy and may the Lord bless you and may uh, He grant you wisdom through the power of His Holy Spirit so that you'll understand clearly whatever this message will uh, tell you and um, may you apply it in your life. So our text this uh, moment is uh, in Exodus chapter 11. So let me pray first uh, for you and uh, for all the listeners. Heavenly Father, we thank you for you are gracious and merciful to us. Even in this time of chaos and calamity, we experience your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your love, your uh, divine protection and your divine guidance upon our lives and as your church as we listen to this devotional message we pray that you strengthen us and give us Lord that uh, uh, heart that is fertile to receive your word that this message Lord God will uh, dive in deep into the crevices of our hearts and it will grow and sprout freely and uh, uh, grow in the beauty of your holiness that it will bear fruit and thank you lord god for your mercy and your grace that you allow us to hear this message continue to strengthen us and give us a humble heart as we study your word be glorified in everything in jesus name we pray amen our text is in Exodus chapter 11, and I'll read the uh, whole chapter, so please bear with me. Verse 1. Now the Lord said to Moses, I will bring one more plague on Pharaoh and on Egypt. After that, he will let you go from here, and when he does, he will drive you out completely. Tell the people that men and women alike are to ask their neighbors for articles of silver and gold. The Lord made the Egyptians favorably disposed toward the people, and Moses himself was highly regarded in Egypt by Pharaoh's officials and by the people. So Moses said, This is what the Lord says. About midnight I will go throughout Egypt. Every firstborn son in Egypt will die. From the firstborn son of Pharaoh who sits on the throne to the firstborn son of the female slave who is at her hand mill and all the firstborn of the cattle as well. There will be loud wailing throughout Egypt. Worse than there was has ever been or ever ever will be again but among the israelites not a dog will bark at any person or animal then you will know that the lord makes a distinction between egypt and israel all these officials of yours will come to me bowing down before me and saying go you and all the people who follow you after that i will leave then moses hot with anger left pharaoh the lord had said to moses pharaoh will refuse to listen to you so that my wonders may be multiplied in Egypt. Moses and Aaron performed all these wonders before Pharaoh, but the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he would not let the Israelites go out of his country. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. I'm sorry for uh, the noise, the background noise. Uh, I hope it will not distract you. This uh, very story is about the exodus the last plague that god has given against egypt and we've seen the stubbornness of uh, pharaoh and as we all know in god's sovereignty he allow these things to happen in the lives of his people and also in the lives of uh, the egyptian uh, Pharaoh and his countrymen as if they have no control over anything that happens in their lives. So here's what we need to realize. First point. God is sovereign 
in both good and bad that happens in and around us. God allows calamities. God allows uh, plague-like calamities to happen in our, our lives, in our communities. Yes, even in, in the whole country. For example, in this uh, passage that we've read, the whole of Egypt was afflicted and will be afflicted again for the last time before their uh, their Pharaoh sent everyone away. We have to realize that there are two distinct people in this world. The first one is the people of God, which is the elect, the chosen people of God. And the other group is the reprobate, the unregenerated, who are who will never uh, be, uh, who will never repent, who will never obey God, who will never worship God, and who will never uh, surrender their lives to God. And that would be their then uh, their judgment. So I want you to realize this of any trouble that happens in our lives. There are only two distinct groups. And we must realize in which group are we included. Are we the ones who would enjoy the graces of God? Are we the ones who would uh, give the... Um, the, uh, the the utmost respect and honor to our God in obedience, or are we the ones who would be stubborn and receive God's wrath? There's a very simple passage here that I want to point out in verse. In Exodus chapter 11, verse 7, it says here, But among the Israelites, not a dog will bark at any person or animal. Then you will know that the Lord makes a distinction between Egypt and Israel. Even in a simple uh, manner, God shows the distinction between His people and the world. At this very moment, no dog barked. It's a very simple way to show the difference between his people, but it gives volumes of, of uh, explanation how the election of God works, how the grace of God works. And you can see from that time when the animals were silent and they were not barking against the people of God, the plague that uh, came down to Egypt to kill all the firstborn among the Egyptians was also silent towards uh, the sons and daughters of the Israelites. Now this distinction here is made clear by those who would obey and those who disobey. The Word of God is the ultimate message in these trying times. The Word of God is the authority that dictates how we live our lives in these very trying times. And as we live among this very perilous and trying times, I pray that we will find the Word of God as something that we would readily obey, readily submit ourselves into and not like the egyptians not like pharaoh remember pharaoh before this uh chapter uh he has already experienced multiple plagues multiple um, uh, calamities but yet he hardened his heart god has given him many chances to submit to God's law to submit to God's word but he won't and in fact as he hardened his heart God gave Pharaoh of his judgment through the hardening 
even more. He God hardened his heart even more, so he won't be able to respond uh, in obedience to God, and that's the judgment of God towards Pharaoh. Now, can we blame God? Can we blame God that uh, he's uh, responsible in in hardening Pharaoh's heart? But the truth of the matter is, God has given Pharaoh a hardened heart not because at first it was soft or obedient rather God gave him to his folly gave him up to his folly he wanted to disobey then God's judgment towards Pharaoh is to give him up to his desires to his lusts so the problem with this situation is if if we claim to be christians if we claim to be followers and disciples of christ yet our hearts are hardened towards the word of god we don't submit to it we don't um uh, give up our, our our personal desires our personal agendas or our personal uh our selfish motives we cannot say that we are followers of Christ. We must give up our lives, deny ourselves, carry our cross, and follow Him, even to the point of death. And as we see, Pharaoh has no uh, inclination to obey God. He hates God. He, he, he views himself as God, a pharaoh, a god king. And this is uh, God's judgment towards him. That he will not receive mercy. And as we see, the Israelites has been given the grace of God. They have been given the opportunity to experience the actual grace of God by sparing them. By sparing them in, in that uh, night of terror in which every uh, firstborn child is being killed. But God has given them instruction. All Israel was given this instruction to uh, to slay uh, the, the, the lamb and then put the blood of the animal into the doorposts as a sign that the angel of death will pass them over. That they will not be touched by the wrath of God. And can you imagine if but a one family of Israelites did not obey. It only proves that they are not a part of God's grace. Because only those who obey God, only those who obey God are his followers. Remember the passage in the New Testament in John. The sheep will hear my voice and they will follow me. And in this time in Exodus, every single Israel, Israelite family followed the decree of God to kill the lamb and put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost as a sign so that the angel of death will not touch them. So, two things are at work in here. God's sovereign decree and our responsibility to obey. So, if we claim to be Christians, God's protection is there. God's provision is there. God's grace is there. But we are responsible to obey His law. We are responsible to obey His decree. We are responsible to obey His words. And if we disobey, if we disobey, discipline will find us. 
And if we disobey completely, and we don't listen to God's word, we we disobey Him blatantly and continuously without any remorse or repentance, then it proves that we are not His children. And if we are not God's children, we are under His wrath. Only the children of God has the capacity to obey Him. That's why in our Christian lives, there are times that we are stubborn, we are disobedient children, but our desire is to obey Him. And eventually, we will repent of our sins. We will submit to God. We will resist the devil, and He will flee from us. And we will wash our hands. We will uh, be cleansed by the Word of God, and we will be restored. Brothers and sisters, my prayer at this time as you hear this message, that we will examine our lives, look into us, look into ourselves and see if we are being obedient in the Word of God, proving that we are His children. If we are disobeying God, my prayer is that we would repent. And unlike Pharaoh, the true sons and daughter of God will repent and will not be stubborn. Let us seek ourselves, seek within our utmost part of our hearts. Let us expose ourselves to the Word of God so that the light of God's word would expose any disobedience in our lives. May we find comfort that God in his sovereignty is at work in the lives of his children. Let us be comforted that we have the capacity to obey, not because of our own strength, but as Philippians chapter 2 says, it is God who works to will and to act. It is His power that enables us to obey. And since we've been alive in Christ, we've been regenerated, we have the capacity to obey God and His Word. The only problem is if we don't read His Word, if we don't study His Word, how can we obey? So my prayer in this moment that we will find time to study His Word, to listen to His voice, and put it into practice. Brothers and sisters, as I end this very short devotional message, we are not Israelites. At the time of Exodus, we are Christians. Now the distinction between us and the world, as in Egypt and Israel, is the way we obey the Word of God. May we continue to seek the Word of God. May we continue to hunger and thirst for His Word. And may we continue to obey it with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. May God bless you, brothers and sisters. I miss you a lot, and I pray that God will continue to strengthen us and keep us safe and in this calamity amongst us. And May God provide all our needs. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, our gracious Father, we thank you, Lord, for your mercy upon us. We thank you, Lord God, for you have given us your uh, Holy Spirit to convict us. You have given us your word to teach us, to show us, Lord, which path we have to, to follow, to go, Lord God. We pray that you give us that humble heart that we may submit ourselves to your word, that we may obey you, proving that we are really your sons and daughters, that we may find delight in your word, to study it and to put it into practice. 
Spare our lives, Lord God, from this calamity around us, knowing, Lord God, that you have the power to protect us. And even if we suck to sickness or even death, we know, we know that we are secure in your hands, that you have given us your Son to die for our sins and has cleansed us from all unrighteousness. And we will embrace you when we return to you. We thank you, Lord God, for your provision and your providence and your protection. Continue to bless your people, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all. I'll uh, get back on social media soon. So continue to pray for each other. Continue to pray for me. Love you all. God bless.